My name is Greg, and I am going to become an ignorant intern. Over the past two years, I have worked in a remote position, a work-study position, unpaid volunteering, and freelancing. I'll be speaking with unpaid interns, unpaid interns turned to paid interns, work-study directors, all in the name of finding out where is the true value. Are students and graduated students just being taken advantage of, or is this the normal and natural process of life to be able to begin working? But if everyone claims that we all work from the ground up, how do I know if I'm starting at the same level ground as anybody else? Or in other words, how do I get myself to the highest ground that I can from the beginning? Let's see what our experts have to say. So Victoria, do you believe that internships and work studies should be the same? It depends. Being a work-study student is actually a great way of getting some some new skills. Uh, not necessarily um, work skills per se, but I mean like, you know, making sure that you're on time or uh, different, just very basics of work skills. But I do think that the library can open up a lot of avenues for student workers. So I think it's a little bit different only because the internship can usually be in that same field. Mm. So I would get somebody from the library science school at DU, whereas a student worker may not be going into library science. They're going into something else. But it is a good way of getting some more skills and um, a good working relationship and just some more experience. Do you believe that if the work studies were unpaid that the library would survive or fail? Or in other words, do you believe that the library depends on the work study students? I really believe that the library depends on work study students only because um, nowadays libraries in general and work, you know, I think anywhere, uh, most people are having to do two or three jobs and that's no different at a library. So the librarians um, have two or three jobs that they're each doing. And if we had to actually work the desk, the information desk and do circulation where we check out books, renew books, um, check in books, et cetera, then we wouldn't be able to get all of our other jobs done. So we do heavily rely on student workers to um, take care of the customer service and check out books and do the circulation. We need those students to be working for us. Or I don't know if we'd fail, but we sure wouldn't be very good at what we're doing. And we would probably miss out on a lot, especially in our professional lives mm -hmm. and being a part of the college. That just would not happen because we would be having to work the hours um, at the information desk. I think one of the biggest struggles and dilemmas that I see people deal with is judging whether it's worth the risk or not to do something different than what you've done already. Intentionally agreeing to do something for 10 weeks or six months or nine months where you are deliberately digging yourself into a hole by accepting an unpaid position that frequently require full-time work feels inherently irresponsible. And I thought student loans were irresponsible. Did your internship set you up for future success in your career? I will say yes and no. Um, I would say yes in terms of it helping me get my current internship that's finally paid. But no, in terms of like, I just felt like I didn't really get much experience. I would say the experience wasn't really any more than another class in college. Um, it's just kind of like they just gave me lesser important stuff, tell me to do it, give it to them, and that was it. What is the difference between a volunteer and an unpaid intern? I think, you know, it, it is very, very tough that, you know, um, because you can kind of argue that unpaid interns, well, if they still want to do that work, could be volunteer. But I do think there is a difference in terms of unpaid interns. It's kind of like a sacrifice you have to make in your career. Looking for a job can be extremely lonely. You spend hours online every day submitting applications, browsing job listings, comparing yourself to the 100 other people who applied within the posting that was listed 10 minutes ago, realizing that the competition is staggering and you are at the mercy of the hiring manager to even send you an email or give you a phone call. 
Do you believe if work studies were unpaid that the school at large would survive or fail? Does the business, in other words, depend on the students or the work studies for it to thrive? The sentiment that I get from hiring managers across campus is that, yes, work study, uh, the, the efforts from work study students, the experience, the dedication um, is all integral to many different departments. There are some that I know would not be able to have student employees if they didn't have uh, work study positions available funded by uh, different financial aid sources. So, yeah, without knowing the specifics of each hiring department and what they need, I do get the overall sentiment that uh, it's crucial. What happens if the funding for work studies runs out? When funding runs out, um, hopefully we have exhausted all of our options to pull more money in. Um, but then, yeah, when when the funding truly has run out, we do have to shut down the program. We don't have the funding to pay anyone, so we can't have them working. It's in my job description that I have to make sure that all the work-study students are getting paid for their hours work. When you struggle for a long time to find a job, it feels similar to being cast into the fire or struggling to keep your head above water. The seasons will change in an instant and you realize that you've been working for six months just to be put into a position to work. I didn't really give too much thought to the fact that it was unpaid. Um, I just made accommodations for that because I knew that that would be a similar situation even if I was in Australia. Um, mm. So why not go overseas? Like if the if the expenses are going to be there regardless, why not, you know, step out of the boat, so to speak, and yeah. do something uh, that I would never normally do when I have the opportunity to do it. And I thought nine months was a a really great opportunity to fully integrate myself into church life, um, surround myself with new people and new culture. Nine months is, I think it pushes you. I think six months, you've just gotten into it. You've found your groove. You're probably ready to go home uh, or stay, whatever your, the situation might be. But for me, by six months, I was like, oh, okay, now I'm really into this. I've got another three months to go. Let's give it all I've got, even though I'm being really challenged in a lot of different areas, I can't pull out because I've still got another three months to go. So it, it forced me to grow in different ways, I think. So young, naive, ignorant me found a job listing that said, we're looking for a full-time video editor. Will you send your application? My application was put onto a short list which then provided me with an interview, which led me to a lot of shame and regret when I realized that this was just a scam. So me being someone who's looking for work, looking to enter into a new creative field, not only can't find anything, submitting job applications for nearly two years is also getting scammed while I'm looking for a job. And so during this time, now I'm trying to figure out how am I supposed to know where can I work? Am I supposed to give up on my career without having some sort of unpaid internship where I have to subject myself to working for free, which is already counterintuitive to what I'm trying to do, which is why I even started going to college? Or am I supposed to just decide that after I graduate, now I work for any other company that I am qualified to do, which means not using my degree, which is every graduate's nightmare? After submitting more applications than I could possibly remember or recall, I had received one email and that one email stated, we know you applied for this. How would you like to do that? We know that you are capable of doing that, yet you haven't proven this. So even after all the time that I had spent working on my resumes and my cover letters and my demo reels, all that I still was earning was somebody willing to give me a chance that I didn't deserve. And so what am I supposed to tell other people when it comes to looking for work? All that I can possibly say is put yourself out there and cast the widest net possible, knowing that somebody may give you an opportunity, but you also have to ask and you also have to present yourself and you also have to be willing to try and fail and fail and fail again and then keep trying. Francois, was your internship paid or unpaid? And do you think it should remain that way in the future? 
So my internship was unpaid. It ended up becoming a paid residency. But for the first nine months, well, that was like the agreed upon like structure for the internship. So uh, it ended up really well for me because I got like a residency after that. And as a South African who's also Belgian now, I got to travel to the States, uh, work in church at in the video department. And it works out really well, and I'm very happy with like the experience I gained from it, especially coming from a um, country that has very different way of doing video and just the type of quality content that uh, is uh, produced. The whole kind of philosophy behind it is very different. So it's experience that is very valuable for me. But I also would encourage anyone that like is wondering about like is this fair or stuff like that? Best way to figure that out for yourself is start your own business, even like a small business. You quickly realize, oh, okay, everything costs money. Everything needs to be done on time. Everything is like, there's, there's like value on every single little thing. Outside my bedroom window, there's a business park right across the open space. And it looks tantalizing to say that it's right there. All you have to do is pick yourself up present yourself well and you'll be approved. You're walking along this path and you don't know what's ahead of you and you barely know if you're even walking the right direction from the start. But the irony behind the work paradox is that you need experience to gain experience and this is my best chance at gaining experience. And this is what I hope will set me up not only for the future of the next few months, but potentially the rest of my life. I want to bring the most value that I can to every place that I exist. So. Ignorant or not, here I come.